Amen. Amen. Encouragement. Encouragement is always in order. Um, I, I, I thought about a little girl that would come here. Uh, she's probably in her teenage years right now, but some of you remember Marie. And uh, we were doing an Easter speech one time, and the kids were kind of uh, getting, um, they, they were kind of getting mixed up on their speeches. And Marie hollered out from the back, come on, you can do it. <laughs> she, she was about three or four years old, but she had the sense of mind to know that at certain times in life, encouragement is necessary. And, and I think that we all can identify in this life, in this Christian walk, which is a hard walk to walk, encouragement is always in order. In fact, we ought to encourage one another uh, before we try to judge one another. I think we get that script flicked a lot of times. We want to judge before we, uh, we, we uh, actually encourage somebody. Or, or we do it like this. Uh, you did good, but. <laughs> so if somebody will get that. You, you, you know how we are. And so we just we want to keep it real today to where we want to encourage along the way. Uh, I'm going to use Sister Penrice as, as one of my examples. One, one evening she came into Bible study. And uh, you know Brother Paul. Brother Paul, is, he's, not, he's never left for any words. And so when she came in, she said, Sister Penrice. Ooh, she said, you're looking good, and you put your pretty self, and she said, go on, go on, say more. <laughs> <laughs> and so encouragement is always, encouragement is always in order. And I like that. I said, you know, that's a good thing. Paul brought something to, to uh, Wednesday night Bible study that we all ought to do. Good to see you. Glad you made it. Amen. And so that's encouragement. You know, uh, a lot of times, uh, now we all fall into this category. Um, a lot of times when we get up, we don't want to come to no church. I mean, the truth be told, <laughs> Satan is on us and we're saying, but it takes that encouragement uh, to say, come on, come on and go with me. I'm going to pick you up. That encouragement. Today in our lesson today, in our message today, and if you will go with me to 3rd John, we'll see a good example of what it takes and how we ought to handle encouragement along the way. Third John, just signify it by saying amen, amen when you reach that passage of scripture. Third John, over by first and second Peter. Go right instead of left. Third John. Still hear some leave turning. That's good. Are you there yet? Yes. Okay, and according to the King James, which I will be reading, it reads on this wise. We're gonna, we're gonna read through verses one through 10, and then uh, we'll talk about 11 through uh, 14, but I want to get the meat of the text. The elder unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest, to the brethren and to the strangers, which have borne witness of charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sword, thou shalt do well. Because that, for his name's sake, they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such, that we might fellowship, fellowship, fellowship fellow helpers to the true. I wrote unto the church, but diatrophies, who loved have for his eminence among them, received us not. Wherefore, if I come, I remember his deeds which he doth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbidden that would not and castrate them out of the church. And I'd just like to talk to you from this thought, encouraging words to a fellow Christian. Amen. Encouraging words to a fellow Christian. 
Um, one of the ministers, uh, uh, Pastor Williams, talked about this yesterday, and it's amazing how different things will link them together with uh, the Spirit of God working. Uh, he painted a picture of the Last Supper, and he said the man that was there with his head uh, on Jesus' uh, shoulder was John, uh, baby John, young John. And John loves the Lord. He uh, was, uh, you got to have a good fellowship with somebody. Uh, we've heard of different bromances, uh, but you, you've got to be sure of your calling. You've got to be yes, sure of your love when you lay your head on another man other than your father. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you've got to be bold enough to accept Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And John was the one who accepted him all the way, his love, his fellowship and felt comfortable around Jesus Christ to the point that Jesus is up here. He's a savior. He's going to die for the world. But John felt comfortable in his fellowship with Christ that he could just have a normal relationship. That's what we ought to pattern after. Our relationship with Christ ought to be so commonplace that when others see it, guess what? They will pattern after us. We ought not be ashamed to show our relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, and, and, and so uh, 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 John is writing to Gaius because Gaius is not only living uh, the truth in Jesus Christ, he's doing everything right as a fellow Christian. Now here's John. John is one of the apostles, and he didn't have to write this letter. Uh -huh. But because of the goodness and of the need at this time, he penned a letter, which ought to tell us that it ought to start at the top. Yes, sir. If encouragement don't come from the top, where's it going to come from? Yes, so here it is that a man of stature takes the time to get out a piece of paper and pen to a friend, to a fellow Christian, that man, I'm glad to hear that you're working for the Lord. You know, a lot of times we do the opposite. We, when we hear that God has called somebody or using somebody who we think is not worthy to be used, we talk them down rather than talk them up. And so here, uh, uh, John decides, I'm going to write a letter. When was the last time you picked up the phone? When was the last time you texted somebody and told them, I'm proud of the way you live? Come on now. And we all have messed up. Now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We all have come short of God's Yes, sir. Glory. And it's only through Christ that we're able to stand boldly and declare, I'm a Christian now. I used to be something else. Yeah. But God touched me. And so he writes a letter to Gaius because Gaius is going through some hard times. Diotrephes is a person who is a, have you ever seen anybody that, uh, it's kind of like a little cartoon in Charlie Brown, it's like Pig Pen. Pig Pen was always walking around as a little cloud over his head. Nothing is never right. Nobody ever treats him right. It's bad luck all over him. We have Christians like that. It ought not be like that. Yes, sir. There ought to be some joy in your life somewhere. Yes, sir. Out of 24-7, uh, 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 365, you ought to have something that you can cheer and thank God for. And here Gaius is facing, all it says is that he was facing uh, some problems in the church and, 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 and John is telling him, no matter what they say, you just keep on yeah. preaching the truth yeah. to power. Amen. Yeah, don't, don't worry about what they say because they'll tell you right now. They don't want to hear that. You have to understand that God called you and you're, and this is what he says, beloved, I wished above all things that they may prosper and be in health yeah. even as our soul prosper. I want to see you 100% prosper. I, I want to see you. I can't afford a Cadillac. <laughs> but if you can afford one, just let me look at it. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm happy for you. Yeah. If I can't wear the latest fashion designs, I'm happy when I see you in. Girl, that hat looks well on you. That's a nice suit. I crunched it and I felt it. And guess what? It even wrinkle. It just wrinkle just fell out of it. You know where I'm going. We, we ought to be proud and we ought to be encouraging to others. Yes, Come as you are. D don't worry about dressing so fashion. I, I might not be able to match your clothing for clothing, but guess what? I can match your spirit for spirit. Amen. 
I can get together and we can sing together. We might, yeah. we might run everybody to church, but when I get to humming and you get to singing yeah. and the yeah. spirit get to moving, we can all lift up Jesus' name. So he says, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I want to see you prosperous in everything. Now, the way it knew the works, Brother Penn Rice, is that as long as you are, somebody else is preaching. <laughs> all right. But if your rage goes over my head, then guess what? That's where jealousy might come in. Because, see, I've been here longer and I deserve it. God blesses who he wants to bless. And, and so here it is. The elder statesman is telling Gail, man, I, I, uh, religion just looks good on you. You, you. you are the epitome of the way we ought to be. So I figured that I'd write you a letter from the top. Uh, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified. Here are some brothers talking about just how good Gaius is. He, he loves the word of God. He loves the truth of God. And not only does he love it, he speaks it and walks it. Yeah, yeah. Now a lot of times we fall short on that. We speak it, but we don't walk it. On, we try to tell other folk what to do, yeah. when to do it, how to do it, but we don't follow suit ourselves. Oh, and so here it is that he's so well that the fame is already going broad that it gets back to John. And John says, I testify of the truth that in thee, even as thou walkest in truth. Guess what? No matter what folks say, keep walking in truth. Because when you speak God's truth, you speak truth to power. It can change people's lives. It can help people along the way. You never know what folk are going through. And so every once in a while to uh, auxiliary leaders, we see what you do. We try to encourage you along the way. Yes, sir. Uh, the ursher, uh, the person whom uh, when they, uh, people walk through the door as strangers, that's the first person they see is the ursher. You do a wonderful job. You, uh, it takes a special person to be an ursher. Yes, sir. You can't be a cursing person as an ursher. Hallelujah, somebody. You got to be able to take it and walk away. Amen. And, and as a kid, Brother Terrell, I used to wonder, the Urshel would be so diligently, and they would walk down and show you a seat to sit in, folk just pass right on by the <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, is that we ought to encourage one another. And so we have to understand that Asia is a living example a written example of how we ought to conduct ourselves. Yes, that when it get back, not only to John, it's get back to God. That we are faithful in what we do. Beloved, and this is the way he says beloved, they are comfortable in their relationship. It reminds me of the relationship that Jonathan and David had. They were comfortable, yeah. Yeah. Brother Chip, with their relationship. Yes, that it went beyond old man Saul and he could not understand why his son yeah. fell in love with David. Yeah. Oh, no. He fell in love with David because David was a man after God's own heart. Yes. And so we have to understand that a lot of times folk get angry when God gives you a position. <laughs> we, we, we have to understand that, that John is writing this letter to his friend, Gaius, to encourage him in a difficult situation in the local church. And the local church going to have some difficulties. Because what we're dealing with is a lot of different attitudes. And so a lot of times people don't mean it. But everybody can have a bad day. Everybody can get up on the wrong side of the bed. But you know what? As Christians, that's when we got to be our best. Somebody is having a bad day. We need to make it a joyous day. We need to say something encouraged along the way that it will lift their spirits and get out of that because we don't know what they're going through. The thing about it is that we need to understand as witnesses of Christ, John said, I've been through it. Yes. I know what it is to be ostracized. I, I know what it is to be criticized. I know what it is to be talked down because of a man named Jesus. I know all about this, but I won't let that stop me because he's the reason for the season. He's the one that, that lifts me and lifts my spirit. He said, I'm not going to worry about the thing that go in the local church. You just go ahead on and handle it, and you keep preaching and a teaching. Yes, and, and, and then he says again, 
he concentrated on the, on the makingly and mainly situation of speaking the truth in love. And you know how we can get nasty love. Um, you know, we can compliment somebody but they don't mean. We can encourage folk but really don't mean. Yes. I don't have to give you an example. We, we've been there. We, we know what it is uh, to criticize while we are trying to bless. But that's not happening here. He says, you're speaking the truth in love. A uh, correction, we know how to correct things. I remember my mother would correct us on a lot of different things out of love. You don't want to do things that way. Out of a soft voice, uh, that'll cause you to lose a lot of friends. That'll cause you to get hurt. It wasn't a mean correction. It was a loving correction. Yeah. And as Christians along the way, we ought to be able to correctly uh, uh, help somebody through encouraging them. Yeah. And not just say, uh, hey, you, you didn't do it the way I wanted to do it. Let them have freedom of expression. Yes. As long as it comes to the same end, yeah. that's the main thing. Nobody's going to do it my way. As a young pastor, I had to learn that. That everybody wasn't going to do it the way I wanted it done. Yeah. So I had to have patience yes. to sit back and say, Lord, I'm praying for the success of the person as well as the project. And guess what? It worked. Yeah. Yeah. God was elevated. Yeah. Yeah. God was lifted up. Yeah. God was magnified. Yeah. And everybody went home happy. And so we have to understand that in the local church, God has already set that up. He says, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the very gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, you got to look at something closer than on that. He didn't say there wasn't going to be hell in the church. He said it just wasn't going to win. And so you got some folk, some hellish folk that come to church. It's in here, Diophanes is a hellish person. He don't even want to receive the brother. He, you, you know what that word preeminence is? He want to know everything. Yeah, yeah. He want to be over everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he want to tell everybody else what to do when he don't know how to do it himself. So you have to understand, Diophanes is the type of person, he don't want to hear the truth. So the thing is, is that, 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 that what John is telling Gay is, you stay on it anyway. You keep preaching and teaching the truth even if he don't want to hear. But guess what? When I come. Now you got to remember John is packing power. If Peter can look on somebody and they can get up and walk, you know John is packing power through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And what did he say? When I come, I'm going to remember what he's done. Uh, you got to you got to be careful when you're messing with a child of God. They don't have to tell God what to do to you. They just got to turn you over to Jesus Christ and let him handle it. Because guess what? He can handle situations quicker than we ever could. We spent a lifetime trying to get back at folk when we shouldn't. Jesus says, be still and I'll fight your battles for you. And that's what we need to learn in this. We need to compliment one another. When they sing, even if we know they hit a couple of sour notes, tell them they, they, they sounded good. I know I can't sing good, but I try to sing. I try to sing. And I know I'm not a uh, developed singer. Uh, the last time I had music was over here in Woodland, and they ain't even here no more. <laughs> Miss Mamie Taylor, she probably knew I couldn't sing then. But the thing is, is that we ought to elevate one another. If you can't sing it, hum it. Yeah, nobody knows what you're doing when you're humming it. Just kind of keep up with the tune. But here it is. He's concentrating on making Gaius realize that he's doing the work, not for himself, yeah. but for Jesus Christ. Here, here, here is the three things that I want you to get. Verses 1 through 4, uh, John tells him, keep walking in the truth. Amen. Yeah, what you need to do is walk according to the words of Jesus Christ. If you walk according to the word, guess what? You won't go wrong. They'll tell you you're wrong, but you won't be wrong when you keep walking. People could see the truth in Gaius because he loved the truth. 
walking in obedience to the truth, and that it brought great joy to John. We ought to be happy when we know that someone is doing the will of Jesus Christ. Walking in the way, and my dear friends, it's not easy to walk in the word of God. He says we're going to have trials and tribulations along the way. But guess what? We can overcome if we have him. Every Christian, this is what I want you to get to, every Christian parent can echo this verse 4 and even make it a prayer. You have to understand that John is telling him, you just keep walking the way you're walking. Amen. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't worry about those folk who won't receive you. What did Jesus tell his disciples? And I'm almost through with this. What did he tell his disciples? When you come into a city and they receive you not, shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. A lot of times we want to sit up and argue with people. And you know my analogy about that. Don't argue with a fool. Don't argue with somebody that says there's no God. Because guess what? When you argue with them, if a stranger walks by, he don't know who the fool is. So don't, don't waste your time. A lot of folks say, well, you ought to stay there. You ought to keep that. No, keep moving. You've asked them to church. You've encouraged them. You told them you need to bring the children to church. Leave it alone. God never forced anybody to do anything. He gave us all free will. And it's going to come up again. Verses 5 through 8 is... It is walking uh, for truth. We're walking up the king's highway and we're waving a truth banner. All of us, all the time, he says, well, you know, every once in a while we tell a little white lie. But we got a forgiving God. Yes, we do. We've got a glorious God. Yes, we do. And he looks beyond our faults yes. and, so, and see our needs. You know, I've told you about that before. I told you, I said, you know, a lot of times when folks come looking and we have that happen in Houston uh, where a man is looking for his estranged wife and they tell him she's not there, they don't know where she is. And look what happens. Look here. It says that you agree with your adversary quickly. What do you think he's telling you? When somebody's holding a gun to your head, don't sit up there and be stupid. Pull the trigger. Go ahead. That's what these young folks, young folks, Stop saying that. You got some folk out there that will do that. But he says, you agree with, oh, yeah, man, you're right. Yeah, I'm, I'm dumb as a duck. That's right, man. You go on. you the king of the hill. Get yourself. Get your hand out of the lounge mouth. And you live another day. You, you know what I like about it as I close this? You know what I like about the old saints? Uh, they, they walked to the pet garden for BTC. All of those old saints knew how to survive. Yeah. They knew how to survive. They came on all the thing right in a time period where everything wasn't right. It wasn't just. Yes. Yes. But they had a mentality, Sister Matthews, that they surprised, they survived. Because guess what? They loved the truth. Yes. And they loved the Lord. And a lot of our saints survived simply because they stayed with the word of God. Yet you slay me. Guess what? I'm still going to trust you. And so we have to be like Gaius. We have to, it has to be deeply rooted and embedded us that we want to live by the word of God. Amen. And, 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 and when, you, when, you, when you assist and when you encourage God's servant, you become a helper and a part of them. It's like mentoring. When you mentor a child, and later on in life, they walk up to you and say, you know, you taught me. You helped me along the way. When things were tough, you told me the truth. And guess what? That helped me along the way. A young man walked up to me the other day and told me, he said, Pastor Lee, in the store, Al, how you doing, man? He said, I'm doing great. He said, I finished school now. And he says that, uh, you know, I'm trying to do, and I'm, I'm working on a little job. He said, I'm trying to elevate and get things done. I said, well, Al, that is great, man. Uh, a single parent uh, child, mother doing all she can uh, with three kids, and, and I get ready to walk out of the store, and he says, hey, Pastor Lee. I said, yeah, Al. He said, thank you for everything you did. I almost lost it. Sharing yes. 
the truth along the way. Just because you're from a single home don't mean you can't be president. Just because you're from a single home don't mean that you can't get a BA or doctoral degree and come back and be a great citizen. Are you with me here? Yes, sir. John is telling Gaius, man, you're doing all right. Don't let anybody bring you down. And honey, we've got folks who will try to bring you down. Jesus on the cross, one thief on one side, the other thief on the other side. Thief on the left side say, hey man, if you be the son of God, won't you save yourself and us too? <laughs> the thief on the other side said, man, leave this man alone. He's done no wrong, but we have done wrong. Jesus says, this day, not tomorrow, this day, not next week, this day, because God is in right time, on time, right now, God. He says, thou will be with me in paradise. And so we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is our encourager along the way. It encourages every day. You need to get up. You need to go a different way. You need to say this. You need to have your mind stayed on Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit directs us. It leads and guides us in the way God would have us to go. John has given us a good example today. And he's letting us know that we ought to all be in encouraging business because we all like to be encouraged. And you know that if you've been in the shopping mall for over three or four hours and you got them red bottom shoes on and you sit and cross your legs so everybody can see your red bottom shoes, you want somebody to come by and say, this is some good looking shoes. Hey, Amen. Don't get no hint, Sister Lee. But the thing is, is that we need to encourage one another, amen? amen? And just the presence of the word of God can encourage us if we just read it. Nehemiah says, it's in the book. All you got to do is take a look.